Hi, my name's Jeffrey. I'm an amateur audio engineer using PreSonus Studio One. My videos are generally about topics that I think could be covered better, especially for beginners. So today we'll talk about mix versions. In particular, the differences between an incremental version and a non-incremental version? Well, when I first came across Save New Version, I totally misunderstood it. I thought it was a snapshot, like in other software packages. Which it is, but also it isn't. First I'll show you how I screwed up and used it incorrectly. Then I'll show you how you can use it correctly as a safety net. I was working on a mix and everything was going fine. At some point I decided I wanted to do some experimenting. So I thought, well, I'll save a version, I'll save a snapshot here. And I was presented with this window that says, save current state as alternate version and continue working on original document. Okay, well, what does incremental version do? Save current state as incremental version and update document to this one. Well, I'm making incremental changes, so I thought that made sense. And so I'll just save my snapshot here as draft mix one. Click OK. And then I went ahead and made a whole bunch of changes. And so then I saved that. But then I came back the next day and realized that I really didn't like this mix and wanted to go back to what I had. Well, no worries. I'll just pull up my snapshot. And so I went to restore version. And I didn't see draft mix one as one of my snapshots. I started to panic a little bit into realizing that this original version was what I wanted. And it's all because I didn't understand how this works and I panicked. So let's make sure that doesn't happen to you. We'll start with the easy case, what I call a snapshot. This is the one where you leave the incremental version unchecked. This will create a version file of the exact current state of your mix. I like to enter a meaningful description here with the date and let's call it pre-mix changes. Click OK and there you go. Now if I ever want to pull up that mix again, all I have to do is go up to File, Restore Version, and it doesn't matter how many versions I've saved, I can always go back and find that exact one, pre-mix changes, here, and restore it. I'll use this a lot when editing a mix that has several takes that need to be comped. I'll take a snapshot before I start comping. Then I'll make my comping changes. Then do my comping, whatever I decide to keep here. Then I'll take another snapshot before I delete the layer tracks. Let's name it with a date and call it post comp. Once I'm done comping, I like to bounce the track, control B. And then you can delete all these in one shot. And really, I'll take a snapshot anytime I'm about to make a bunch of edits and might accidentally bash something. As an example, one time I was working on a mix and suddenly noticed that a section of one of the tracks that I hadn't touched for a long time was just gone. I don't know what happened to the clips that were in there. I panicked a little bit, but I'd been taking snapshots. So all you need to do then is go to Song, Import Song Data, then go to the song folder you're working on, go to History, and in this case, <laughs> everything has the same date, but in this case I know I want this Snapshot 2, so I can open that, and it was Track 2 that I'm looking for. Really all I care about are the events, so I could unclick these, but I don't really care. It'll import the whole track. Okay, there's the piece I was looking for. I can just drag that over there and then delete this track. There, and now I've recovered what was lost. Okay, so what is the incremental version for? There's more to this than meets the eye, so don't leave the video yet. First, let's understand the three separate things it does. First, it saves the current mix to a version. Second, it creates a new version based on the name you gave. And third, it changes the mix name to include the version name as your current working version. 
Why would you want all that? Well, this makes sense to me for when you really want different versions of a mix, like perhaps a long dance version and a shorter, can I say, radio version. Or, for example, there's a song I'm finishing that will be used as a soundtrack for a video, but the video version will incorporate some sounds from the video itself that wouldn't make sense in the audio-only version. Or perhaps you want to do your own dark side, bright side mixes like Peter Gabriel. We can use that as an example. Here's how I'd approach it. First, let's say I've finished all my comping and editing and I'm ready to start mixing. This is where I'd save an incremental version called Static Mix. What that will do is save my original mix version as a version called Original and a new one called Static Mix. It also adds the name Static Mix in parentheses to the name of my song file. But this is not yet my static mix because I still need to do that work, but it is my current working version of the static mix. Okay, let's say I've finished my static mix and I'm ready to start working on my bright side mix. First, just to be sure, we'll save this version. Of course, you can do Control S. And now I'll create a new incremental version that I'll call Bright Side. And I'll go off and work on that. Once I'm happy with my Bright Side mix, of course I'll hit save. And now I can start on my Dark Side mix by going back and restoring my static mix. And then creating an incremental mix version called Dark Side. And now from here, I can jump back and forth between those versions if I want, and all my mix downs and master files will include the name of the version being saved. Let me show you what that looks like. We're on our dark side version right now. Let's create a master file for that. That's done. Now we'll pull up our bright side version and create a master file for that. And now when we look at those, we see we have two master files, and one is marked bright side, and one is marked dark side. So the versioning will help you keep everything separate going forward. One word of caution. If you're the sort of person who likes to come through and remove unused files, that's great, but be careful if you're using versions, because the feature will delete everything not used by that version that you have open right now, if you remove a track from this version, and then remove unused files, delete permanently, then try to pull up a different version, it won't find the media for that track, because it was deleted by remove unused files. For me, if I'm planning several versions, I do my deletes after finishing the static mix, and that's it. I wouldn't come back to remove unused files anymore. Okay. I hope that helps you understand the difference between non-incremental snapshots and incremental working versions. And I can pretty much promise you, sooner or later, a snapshot or incremental version will save you. This is Jeffrey. Until next time, happy mixing, my friends.